What is good, everybody? Back again with a chill commentary, because guess what? 2020 is almost over. And this is kind of a tradition here on the channel, is to cover my favorite FPS games from the last year. The unfortunate bit is not a lot of FPS games came out this year. If you compare it to 2019, it's crazy, right? You know, we had Doom Eternal, Diabotical, Cold War, and a few others thrown in there. Warface Breakout, I think, is this part. Yeah, that was this year. Modern Warfare 2, the campaign remaster. But then, if you think about 2019 and what we covered, Metro Exodus, Anthem, The Division 2, um, Splitgate, I believe. Yeah, Splitgate was last year, wasn't it? And Gears 5, Borderlands 3, The Outer Worlds, Modern Warfare 2019. A lot of stuff last year. Last year was huge and heavy. Uh, so this year is really just going to be a look back at the FPS games I played the most, since most of them didn't come out this year. Now, I'd love to know what your favorite FPS game of 2020 was, if you're looking forward to anything in 2021. Let me know down in the comments. Let's get started. So without a doubt, my favorite FPS of the year and my second favorite game of the entire year, Doom Eternal. If you want to see more, check out the full review we did back, I think, in March, which feels like a completely different year ago. Like, I think back to right when this whole world craziness was getting started, and that just feels like a different lifetime. But dang, this game is still viciously good. The level design is insane, and if you like high-quality arena FPS gameplay, there is nothing better. Now, this is really fast, really intense, and fatiguing. That's the one thing that I would say is it's stylistically pretty different from a gameplay perspective from Doom 2016. Now, it's not light years differently. They obviously share so much of that same underlying heartbeat, but Doom Eternal was a lot more intense. The air strafes, the grapple hook stuff. I loved it. I absolutely loved it, but know that it's a little bit different flavor than Doom 2016. And throughout this year, I've had lots of conversations with buddies who are, you know, debating, do they like Eternal or 16 better? And for the most part, I think people like each of them for what they both can provide. But man, I'm not a fan of gore, but I go out of my way to play these new Doom titles because it has just, they've done it, man. And I, I wish Halo would look at Doom 2016 or even Eternal to go, all right, this is how you reinvent the franchise in a way that honors the core pillars yet brings in some new people. Eternal is a super, super sick game and it's worth checking out. My second favorite game this year didn't come out uh, this year other than Beyond Light and that was Destiny 2. So if you guys haven't been watching the channel, I took a full year off from Destiny 2 after Shadowkeep. Didn't look at the news, didn't touch the game, and then had a group of friends, some of you may know good old Lurker Zero and Hagstrom's who were pulling me back, telling me just how good Destiny 2 had become, and this was late summer of this last year. So I hopped in about six weeks before Beyond Light, and wow. Bungie has got this game in a much, much better place, and I had an incredible time playing the six weeks leading up to Beyond Light, and then pretty much a straight month of D2 during Beyond Light. Now I've since put the game down, and I'm definitely not going to be coming back for this next season, I'll come back for, you know, the Vault of Glass reimagining, and it's a great game. It is a really good game. It's still not at a place where I could see myself playing this every single quarter or every single season. It just doesn't have its hooks in me. It doesn't have the reward structure. I don't know. It's still missing some stuff that would keep me coming back all the time, but props to Bungie because Beyond Light definitely pushes it a little bit closer to that RPG fantasy that I think a lot of people have been hoping for. Diabotical. This is a cool game that I have no idea how its popularity is doing. The spiritual successor to Quake, James Too Good Harding, putting this bad boy together, Quake legend himself, and uh, casting infamy. I think this is a great free to play Quake like shooter. And it's always fun to boot up and try it. The really hard thing about all of these games are. Yeah, getting a fan base, right? These old school, high skill ceiling arena shooters like Quake Champions or Unreal Tournament, rest in peace. They're tough as a new player to get in, to learn, to become addicted and to really dive down the rabbit hole that is the immense skill ceiling in these arena FPS games. 
I thought Diabotical did a really good job. Taking community input, having a really solid Discord, and I don't know, putting together a nice modern offering for this type of game. I haven't gone back and touched it outside of that launch month. I'm sure I'll come back at some point, but if you are craving that quick style gameplay with no compromises, Diabotical's worth your time, it's free to play, and I really hope that they find success and some level of popularity. Cyberpunk is weird. It doesn't go on my list because I'm not done with the game. I've decided I'm taking a break at about like the 30 hour mark and going to wait for some more patches. Going to wait for this thing to uh, see a little bit more love. If you guys want to know my full opinions on Cyberpunk, I did a video last week on it. You can check it out. I respect the game in a lot of ways. I respect what the developers were doing and I'm viciously disappointed in the higher ups at CD Projekt Red that pushed this game out too early and man definitely created such a huge mess i'm not gonna go into it here if you guys have been following it at all you know instead of this being a pr win it's a pr disaster for cd project and deservedly so especially those original you know ps4 and xbox one versions of the game don't buy those don't buy them they're not anywhere near uh where it should be for a consumer in my opinion so unless they really sort some of that stuff out, it's a bummer because most people I'm gonna wager watching this video aren't PC owners and probably don't have next-gen consoles just yet. If you do, congrats, that's awesome, I'm jealous. Someday I'll get myself a, a PS5, but yeah, Cyberpunk, beautiful, huge potential, super impressive in some ways and very unimpressive in others. My most hyped game of the last five years so uh, I'm more than happy to wait for this thing to get some patches and further development. Honorable mentioned the Modern Warfare 2 campaign remaster. It was fun. It was a nice little afternoon or, or couple of days to work my way through that thing. But please, come on Activision, give us the multiplayer. Give us that MW2 multiplayer. I don't know if they're waiting to do, you know, Modern Warfare 2021 because it's going to be like the MW2 spiritual successor. But you want to just print free money, man. Give us MW2 multiplayer remastered. Maybe fix, uh, what is the one man army or whatever? Um, fix a couple of the awful things that Infinity Ward never did back in the day. And you have a recipe that is going to be just fantastic. <laughs> All right, moving on to some of the other games that I was playing throughout this year. I dipped my toes in the water with Apex Legends about every other season. I played a metric ton of season six. Me and my good buddy played every single day ranked for, I wanna say a month and a half. And at that same time, I was playing uh, Kovacs using Aimer 7's uh, guide, essentially, and trying to improve my aim. I'm telling you, if you're on PC, I can't recommend highly enough Kovacs Aim Trainer and Aimer 7's guide. I did it every day for a month and I saw huge, huge improvements. You do wanna see a video about some aim and accuracy tips, be more than happy to talk about my experience. I just know that's a pretty saturated topic already on, on YouTube where guys are like, I played this every day for a month and now I never miss. Yes, they still miss though. Titanfall 2, uh, when it came to Steam earlier in the year, that was incredible. I actually had a, a group that we played every Monday night, Titanfall 2, for a good four or five weeks after that happened. Tons of fun. Still one of the best FPS games ever. I believe it just came to Game Pass, so if you're on the Xbox One, absolutely hop back in there, give it a shot. I respect Titanfall 2 a bunch. It just never can seem to retain a very big player base, which is darn unfortunate. Hoping that Respawn gives us Titanfall 3, maybe someday. And finally, the Halo Master Chief Collection PC unning, where we got the Halo games onto the PC. Rough start with last December Reach and Combat Evolved and then Halo 2 Classic and H2A. Reach was not great on PC in terms of mouse players. The unlocked frame rate had that crazy bad frame stuttery interpolation stuff which is now fixed it runs beautifully on unlocked on a pc when halo combat evolved came out for the pc man they had the uh bullet spread issue where even when you were tap firing as fast as possible you were getting the same bullet spread with the magnum as fully auto which 
That took him, I think, a couple of months to fix, which was a little bit of a bummer. And then Halo 2 Classic was a total mess. The flight didn't have half the bugs that the release one did, and it took him a little bit to fix it. And that was unfortunate. It was looking pretty bleak until around Halo 3. Like the PC releases, I was not very excited. I, I actually was cutting some pretty critical videos back when Halo 2 Anniversary and Classic came out because it just was killing the momentum. It was hurting the vibe and uh, wasn't looking that good until Halo 3. And Halo 3, they got really, really right. I think it was Splash Damage who was helping with that port. So if you've seen any of the, the Dirty Bomb videos on the channel, I think it was those guys. Really good port, lots of fun, super smooth. Once they fixed the hit detection and we got this updated modern hit detection, um, it's amazing. And Halo 3 PC is just butter. Something I spent a lot of time on. Then into ODST and Halo 4, even more goodness. And now that we have crossplay, Halo MCC PC, the journey in my mind is pretty much complete. And I know that there's still the custom game browser to go and a few other stretch goals, but honestly, I was really impressed with how it was handled the back half of the year. Yeah, there's landmines to step on left, right, and center when people are like, oh, but what about the Halo Online armors? And oh, what about blah, 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 blah. Like, on the whole, man, I had a good time with what was brought to the table from Halo 3 onwards. And uh, there's crossplay. There's just a, a really cool unity between the two player bases. How long will this last? Who knows? I would definitely say play some classic Halo now before Infinite gets here. Because I do think it'll have a sort of a migration of players over to Infinite, which I hope is true. I like, I hope Infinite's a big success. So with 2020 in review, my friends, Doom Eternal, without a doubt, favorite FPS release this year. There's a lot of good stuff out there to play. Oh, I almost forgot about Cold War. Uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Cold War. I love it and hate it. I think with less SBMM or maybe some more visibility into it, I would enjoy the game more. It's a paradox for me, man. This this Call of Duty, I respect Treyarch because I think they had, what, 9 to 11 months to inherit this project from Sledgehammer and get it out the door during a work-from-home year. Like, that's really impressive. But at the same time, too, it's got a lot of frustrations and sticking points that makes it tough for me to play longer than, like, an hour. So I need more time with Cold War before I let you guys know further. You can check out my impressions video of it um, for a better explanation. But yeah, it's it's there. I like a lot of it and I dislike. The stuff I dislike is really deflating. Like it definitely removes a lot of motivation to grind that thing. All right, and with that, you guys, I want to say a huge thank you from me to you. This year was hard. Uh, on YouTube. I will definitely admit this was a challenging, challenging year between all the IRL stresses and just the YouTube algorithm this year is insanely difficult to get ahead of or get on top of. A lot of my YouTuber friends have had this conversation a bunch. Everything's just wonky this year. So if you're still watching these videos, if you're supporting the channel, if you're a sub, if you're thumbing it up, if you're leaving comments, whatever, man. If you're replying for Monday Night in the Pits, Thank you. You guys mean a lot to me. And I really do appreciate the support that you show on the channel. It's a fun outlet for me. And it's cool to get to connect with you guys. So have a wonderful start to your new year. Fingers crossed this next year is better than this one. And uh, I think we will be seeing a lot more games at the end of next year's video than this one. So cheers. Thank you very much. And I will see you again very soon. <laughs>